Hi everyone, Paul here from FamilyWheels.ca with another car review for your growing family. And this time around we're in another Subaru courtesy of Subaru Calgary. It's the Legacy, a car that has really had quite a legacy in the Subaru family. It's been around since 1989 and it's really grown up with the company since then. When it was first released, you could get it as a wagon, you could get it as a sedan, even as a coupe. And then as we saw the company changing, when we saw the introduction of the Outback, it was really quite a nice middle ground between the Impreza and the Outback, both in terms of size and price. It was a little lower slung, a nice driving vehicle. In fact, one of my parents' favorite cars they ever had to drive was a legacy wagon back from the late 90s before my sister went and totaled it anyway. But now this car has actually gotten a bit bigger in its latest generation and it's now competing against the heavy hitters the likes of the Toyota Camry the Honda Accord a vehicle that we reviewed just a couple of weeks ago that has been completely redesigned for 2018 and we really really liked so how is the legacy going to do compared to those big names in the sedan market let's spend a week on board this thing and find out this week on family wheels Well, even though we're still in the sixth generation legacy, which has been around since 2014, there are some pretty significant changes to talk about for this 2018 model year. First up, a refreshed exterior look. I think it's the most mature looking car in the Subaru lineup. The new 2018 Camry, meanwhile, has tipped over the apple cart a little bit and has some saying the design is too radical for a traditionally more reserved sedan. Meanwhile, while I really like the lines on the new Accord from Honda, it's proven to be very divisive, with many saying it's an ugly mess. The Legacy, meanwhile, is a very handsome car that's still not too flashy in its exterior lines to alienate the more reserved among us. And speaking of Apple Carts, another thing that's now standard for 2018 is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, giving you far better smartphone integration. It's the kind of technology that people are really demanding of their vehicles these days, and it's not standard on all Subaru cars. For example, that Forester I was in last week, it's not available on any trim of that vehicle, so nice to see it here in the Legacy. Standard equipment is generally quite good in this car. We've got heated front seats, we've got a 10-way power adjustable driver's seat, a six and a half inch infotainment system with a rear backup camera Apple CarPlay and Android Auto again come standard and then we've also got of course as we see in pretty much every Subaru Subaru's full-time all-wheel drive system and this in my opinion is what really makes it jump off the page from its competitors even though the legacy starts at just under $25,000 in Canada it gives you the confidence of all-wheel drive straight out of the gate meanwhile the Camry the Accord start at over a thousand dollars more at their base price and the Mazda 6 is marginally cheaper at its starting price but none of these cars offer all-wheel drive at all. But unlike the Outback, which is in many ways a sibling to the Legacy, this car doesn't come with X mode. For 2018, all trims of the Outback now have X mode on board. And that gives you the ability to go into more extreme off-road environments where it's sandy or muddy or icy, and you press that X mode button and the vehicle's all-wheel drive system and traction control systems change a little bit so that you can get through those nastier environments a little bit easier. Here in the Legacy, it's got a little bit less ground clearance and it's meant to be a bit more of an urban cruising car or a highway cruiser than a real off-road adventurer. Now we're in the Touring trim, which adds bigger 17-inch wheels, a sunroof, dual-zone climate control, a super clear 8-inch infotainment system screen, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross traffic alert. Now we also have the EyeSight package included, which adds $1,500 to the price and gives you one of the best driver assistance systems on the market right now, in my opinion. Super smooth adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist systems, as well as the bonus of a smart key and push button start and that rounds the price of this tester as we see it this week up to just shy of thirty thousand dollars and then if you really want to splash out you can go for the limited trim and that gives you heated second row seats leather seating surfaces a heated steering wheel led headlights and before the dust settles before taxes up here in canada you're looking at just shy of thirty four thousand dollars which is still actually really good value considering all the car that you're getting at that price 
Now the base engine is the engine that we're driving in here this week. It's the classic two and a half liter four cylinder boxer engine that Subaru has been putting out for a long time now. And it still feels plenty peppy in all but high speed highway passing scenarios. Now this engine that we're testing here this week is the only option available on all but the highest level limited trim, at which point you can also opt for a 3.6 liter six cylinder engine. Now I drove that engine around last year in the Outback and while it does put out 81 more horsepower, it just didn't quite have the oomph that I was expecting of it. And considering that it's a $3,000 premium on the price tag that you pay for the car and also that you're going to have a bit of a heftier fuel bill at the end of the month, I personally would stick with this more basic two and a half liter boxer. But according to Subaru Calgary, they sell far more of the six cylinder engines than they do what I'm driving here this week. So it seems like people in this market anyway are opting for more power. Thank you very much. Now, now one thing that you can't argue is that this smaller engine is certainly going to give you far better fuel economy. In fact, this week we're averaging a pretty amazing 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers. That's on a mix of highways, city roads, and also on mountainous roads as well, up at some pretty high elevations. That actually means that we're seeing better fuel economy this week in this car than we saw in the front wheel drive Accord a few weeks ago. Now granted, it was snowy, it was colder, but considering that this is a big sedan with full-time all-wheel drive, I'm very impressed with the fuel economy that we're seeing here. But no matter what, both engines are now mated to a continuously variable transmission in the Legacy. The manual transmission is no longer an option in Canada as of 2018, and it's a CVT that's been refined over the last couple of years. There's much less of a surging sensation, even compared to the Forester from last week, it behaves much more like a traditional automatic in all but the most lead-footed, off-the-line requests that you make of it. Now, even though this car shares the same transmission, the same engines, the same platform as we'd see in the Outback, it actually behaves quite differently on the road. And that's for a few reasons. First of all, all those things have been tuned to be a bit more of a cruising vehicle. We also have a slightly lower ground clearance. I mentioned this earlier, 220 millimeters of ground clearance in the Outback versus 150 millimeters here in the Legacy. And that gives you a nice middle ground because I found in the Impreza when I was testing it last year that the new version of that car is maybe a little bit too low for snowy wintry driving. I was bottoming out when I was dealing with mashed potato-y kind of snow and it meant that it was not quite as practical for our Canadian winters. Here in the Legacy, we've just got a little bit more which should make it very livable. Another reason why this car feels just a bit more planted in the corners is that for 2018, we've got further chassis strengthening. And you put all of this together and you wind up with a vehicle that feels far more composed, far more refined than I was expecting it to. Another thing that impresses me here in the Legacy is road noise. It's actually the quietest Subaru that we've ever tested on the channel at 62 decibels at 100 kilometers an hour. That's thanks largely in part to laminated glass, which has been put into this vehicle for the first time in 2018. That really brings the road noise down and makes it quite a bit quieter than the Forester we were in last week and just slightly louder than what was a very quiet ride in the Honda Accord. The interior on the Legacy also sees some changes for 2018. We have a new steering wheel with some new switchware. It looks good. The 8-inch infotainment system in our tester is super crisp with an easy-to-use interface. But, you know, we'd rather actually move all the climate control information and clock out of this old-school style kind of digitized readout below and into the larger screen itself for a bit more of a streamlined look. The climate control buttons, by the way, feel a little bit chiclety and cheap to the touch, and there are some really hard cut rate feeling plastics throughout the cabin as well. So once you do actually start to run your hand over some of the surfaces that you've got on board this car, it just starts to cheapen the overall feel of the Legacy. Meanwhile, seat comfort is kind of middle of the road. I feel like this foam isn't particularly supportive, so for a really long road trip, you might start to fatigue in them. We also don't have much bolstering here, so you do tend to get thrown around in the corners just a little bit. Speaking of seats, in the limited trim, even though you do have those pinhole perforations, ventilated seats aren't an option in that car. And if it does want to keep step with some of those higher grade vehicles that are available on the market, it'd be nice to have that feature. 
Now in terms of second row legroom, you're gonna find exactly the same amount here in the Legacy as you will in the Outback. 38 inches means that it's pretty darn spacious and puts it right on par with the Camry. But in the new Accord, you actually get two inches more second row legroom, and that was a very comfortable second row. In terms of car seats, the Legacy handles them very well. We've got a front-facing car seat for Roger, and he was totally happy back there. We flipped it around into rear-facing mode. We're measuring out 29 inches from the back of the front passenger seat cushion up to the glove box. That actually makes it better than the Subaru Forester, believe it or not, and it makes it very comfortable for family living. Now, speaking of families, this car does have a top safety pick plus rating from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, the very best that you can get from that organization, like we're seeing in pretty much every Subaru in the company's line at this point. Now at the back end of this car, we have 425 liters of trunk capacity, and that puts it right on par with the Camry and with the Mazda 6. But again, the Accord beats it out just ever so slightly with 20 more liters of capacity. It's a decently sized trunk that could fit our standardized trunk test just fine, but there is a big black box bolted to the trunk ceiling that can make taller items a bit tricky to fit. I, for example, was tasked with a trip to Ikea this week for my sister, and while all the boxes would have been a breeze to pack into the Outback, which has over twice the capacity of this car, by the way, it was a bit of a game of Tetris to make it work in the Legacy. You know, ultimately, the Legacy is a smart-looking, refined sedan with an all-wheel drive system that really separates it from the rest of the competition in the mid-size sedan segment. But I haven't been able to stop myself all week from comparing this car to its wagon sibling. At $4,000 more, the Outback is a bit spendier, but you've got so much more versatility and capability. You've got the trunk space for your family dog, or big hockey bags, or a trip out to the mountains. You've got that extra ground clearance for bouncing down a snowy back road. There's a reason why the Outback is the best-selling vehicle for Subaru in Canada. Subaru Calgary figures they sell four Outbacks for every one Legacy that moves off their lot. And that kind of brings us full circle here to the smaller sibling scenario. I never got a chance to drive that Legacy wagon before my sister totaled it. Sometimes it pays off to be the bigger sibling, and I just think that's the case here in this car. The Outback, to me, seems like the more obvious choice. But you can put me in my place if you want to my way off base. What do you think of the Legacy sedan? Leave a comment below, subscribe while you're at it, and we'll see you next time around here on Family Wheels.